Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't actually think I would be making a video on a stall deck. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that poison of the old man. Like and subscribe button so we can climb up even higher the 1200 ladder. So I saw this on MCO40's channel. This is from Kong's Cards. For the life of me, I cannot find a deck profile of this deck that came in 14th place at like a Kong's Cards tournament. But I would love to know the mindset and the thinking behind this player because on paper, this deck is hot garbage, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is a 14th place stall deck, question mark, um, that did well at a locals. Um, yeah, like it's it's a thing. Like you mix in Cash Tira with some Mathmet cards and scapegoats apparently with only two copies of super poly because that's your only two outs to fucking king calamity and uh yeah you just you get yourself a 14th place in the ball game so let's just go through this deck profile i don't know what this person's matchups were they could have played against scrubs all day but this deck is hilarious to me so we're playing two copies of spear modes because breaking boards is good uh three copies of alpha two copies of gizmek one panky wanky tops uh, two Unicorn with three Fenrir. <laughs> then we have a Math Mech Engine, because why the hell not? <laughs> uh, one Circular with three Sigma. And then two copies of Photon Jumper. So when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can activate this effect. Skip your next battle phase. Also, special summon this card from your hand, then end this battle phase. If this card is sent to the grave, you can add a Photon or Galaxy spell or trap from your deck to your hand. You only use each effect once per turn. Uh, you only use each effect to jump for once per turn. Also, I apologize for the thunder outside. So I guess you played this over something like Battle Fader or Mahama the Fairy Dragon because it can search itself. For those of you who don't know, uh, Mahama the Fairy Dragon, if I can spell it right here. Uh, Mahama the Fairy Dragon, yeah, this, this thing. Um, so during your opponent's turn, when either player takes battle damage, you could special summon this card from your hand and apply one of these effects. Gain life points equal to that battle damage, and flick damage your opponent equal to that battle damage. Seems better than Jumper. Um, I know that my dad plays it in his really scrub burn deck, and then he was playing it in his rank 8 Axis deck because he's just a troll like that. But it, it's a hot garbage card, like, don't get me wrong. But, like, I feel like that that's better than Photon Jumper. Uh, they were playing two copies of Rainbow Crevo. God, I remember playing this in uh, Light Ray Diablos Chaos Dragon decks back in the day. So you can only use the effect of Rainbow Crevo once per turn. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can target that attacking monster. Equip this card from your hand to that monster. It cannot attack. When an opponent's monster declares a direct attack while this card's in your grave, you can special summon this card by banishing when it leaves the field. It's a good little uh, attack stopper. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, for the spells, we're playing one change of heart, one galaxy cyclone, I guess because we don't want to play cosmic cyclone, which is kind of strictly better. The only difference is that like galaxy cyclone is an MST, but it's on a normal spell, and then you can banish it from your grave to pop a face-up spell or trap on the field. Uh, one mind control, two copies of super poly is our only out to king calamity in this deck. Three copies of scapegoat, because apparently we're still in the mindset of 2017 when this card was last good. <laughs> one birth. One pressure planet to search our five cash tira cards. <laughs> three evenly match, three lost win, uh, three spiritual swords of revealing light, and then one titan cider or titano cider. So this card says uh, target one face on monster your opponent controls that was special summon from the extra deck. Changes the attack to zero, and if you do negate its effects, if your opponent special summons a monster, monsters from the extra deck while this card's in your grave, except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you could set this card. You can only use, each, only use each effect once per turn. And then Spiritual Swords of Revealing Light once per attack. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can pay a thousand life points and negate that attack. During your opponent's turn, you can banish this card from your graveyard. This turn, your opponent's monsters cannot attack directly. Again, this is a stall deck for a reason. Um, my guess is just looking at this at face value, my guess is that like you want to go second and then crack boards with like super poly and evenly and stuff and sphere modes and alphas and whatever and break the opponent's board and then kind of, I guess, OTK them, but then also stall them. I feel like you're better off just playing rank eight axis. Like this is garbage. <laughs> like I'm not trying to be mean to the person that came in 14th place at this deck. Like clearly they got something going on. Uh, in their mindset in this world to be able to do well with this like whether it was a 10 person locals or 20 person locals i don't know what it is it's the fact that the concept is here and it should be taken note of like it's very interesting in that regard now should you take this to a regional <laughs> no you should not 
because your butthole is going to get stomped in and you're going to get kicked out of the venue all the way to the next venue hall next door or the convention center next door. Like, this is not going to get you your invite. I'm sorry. I hate to be that guy, but you're playing a 41 card main deck with two copies of Super Poly and these two cards are your only out to King Calamity. <laughs> Oh my god, if you get King Calamity and you're playing this, like you might as well scoop up your cards and not even show the opponent what you're playing because it's just GG. And like I know that like King Calamity is such a cop out, but the fact that King Calamity is a card that you have to take into consideration post Duelist Nexus, just like I said in my previous video talking about King Calamity, like uh, playing two copies of Super Poly in a 41 card main deck, like that's what, like a 20. 5% chance, I think, to open with Super Poly in your 5-card opening hand or drawing it for turn into 6. Because, like, clearly with all these cards in the deck, you want to go 2nd. And, like, if you don't open up Super Poly to fuse away that Crimson Dragon and that Baron into a Dracoby Quest, you're losing the ballgame. On top of that, we're not even playing Dracoby Quest. So, like, how do we beat King Calamity at all? With that being said, here's the extra deck. Uh, one Garua, one Mud Dragon, one Final Sigma, one Psychic End Punisher, one Light Dragon Ending Mister, one Exiton, one Avermax, one Heat Soul, one uh, Dark, one Lina, and then one Asa Charmer, uh, one Pit Knight Early, one Splash Mage, one Link Karibo, and one Link Karibo. For the side deck, we're going uh, way back to 2008. Uh, three Spooky Dogwood, one Ice Jade, because why not, I guess. Uh, two Poison of the Old Man, because like I said, 2008. One D Fisher, one Necker Valley, uh, three Iron Wall. Like, with D Fisher, I guess. Like, if we're playing against, like, Cash Tira or Flunder. And then three Real Decree, because we don't want to play against Labyrinth. And then one Unending Nightmare, because we don't like Trap Trick or Labyrinth or Eldritch or any kind of spell or trap back row deck, really. Um, I'm so confused. Like, my brain does not know how to process this. How does this deck do well in 2023? Like, clearly, like, at least in a local setting, if you know what your local metagame is then this deck can function well. I, I gotta shuffle up this hand again, because when I tried to do test hands earlier, it was garbage. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna assume that we go second. So we draw into Super Poly. So I guess you can out the King Calamity, I think. Two monsters with the same type and attribute, but different names. No, you can't out King Calamity at all. Like, you have to throw in um, Dragon Knight, Draco Quest into this deck. So like, maybe you take out one of your Charmers for Draco Quest. Um, like, if you actually wanted to, like, take this to some kind of big event, like, you would have to put in Dracula Quest, you'd have to put in a third Super Poly, you'd have to take out Galaxy Cyclone, I don't know why the fuck this person's playing Galaxy Cyclone, like, why are you playing Galaxy Cyclone in 2023, just play Cosmic, like, I'm not trying to be a dick, it's just, this deck profile is hilarious to me, because this is clearly something that, like, my dad would think above, because he just refuses to play a modern Yu-Gi-Oh deck, but, like, it's also, I feel like it could be better designed. And, like, that's not to be mean to the person who made this. Like, they could have reasoning behind all of these cards. And I just can't find the deck profile on YouTube where it's just not up at the time of me making this video. But, like, why are you playing Galaxy when you could play something like Cosmic Cyclone? Like, yeah, like, you can't get the double pop effect. But, like, I don't feel like you need that in this deck. Like back row is the least of your concern in a deck like this like your main concern from at least how robbie cole described this fucking deck is like you just want to stall out the game and like you want to prevent the opponent from building a board so like you go second you break their board with stuff like sphere mode super poly evenly and all the other stuff the cash tira engine is just good for consistency um but like why the scapegoats like this doesn't make sense to me like I get that you can use the scapegoats to climb up into link lines, but, like, why? Like, you're using a math mech engine with cash tier. It's like, just play rank 8 Axis at this point. Like, you're already playing the Alphas and the Gizmax and the Fenrirs. Like, bro, just play rank 8 Axis with three super polys and more super poly targets instead of, like, half math mech, half cash tier, half fucking stall shit. Like, I don't understand how this deck functions, but it's really funny to me. But... All jokes aside, I'm not trying to give the person a hard time. It's just 
Like, there, there are better tech cards in here. And they could have been playing stuff like Galaxy just to troll so that morons like me would be like, why are you playing this trash card when you could be playing other things? It could have been just to troll his locals, like, honestly. But this deck is hilarious to me. Don't take this to a regional or a YCS. You, your butthole will get destroyed out of the convention center. Like, you, you will not do well with this, I can guarantee you. If you take this to a regional and you get, like, top eight, I'll eat my words and, like, I'll, I'll pay you $100 or something. Like, if you can actually do well with this. But outside of, like, a local metagame setting and trolling your local player base, don't take this to an event. You're, you're going to get laughed out of the convention center. You're going to scrub out me at table 500 with my dad playing rank 8 Axis with owner seal and garbage like that. <laughs> but this is hilarious. Like, a kudos to the guy who played this because this is hilarious. You should be playing Muhammad the Fairy Dragon, though. That, that card's better than Photon Jumper, in my opinion. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.